I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and last week we covered a story in which two swineherds got into a dick-waving contest of epic proportions. Let's talk a little bit about that story. The subject of this Irish folklore video was chosen by my patrons on Patreon. You can help vote to decide what kind of content I make by signing up for as little as one dollar a month. Uh, this is a fairly unusual story. The contest has no clear winner between the two swineherds. There is no connection to major figures from Irish myth or legend, despite the fact that it leads directly into the town. And even though the stakes are quite low, in fact, they are competing purely for bragging rights, it ends up being fairly epic in scope. The Tawn is an ancient Irish epic, in which Queen Maeve of Connacht rallies the armies of Ireland to invade Ulster and steal the brown bull of Cooley as it is the only bull in Ireland equal to Finvalach, the white bull belonging to Queen's husband, Elil. And Queen Maeve refuses to not be equal to her husband in all respects. The tone ends in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of men on both sides and the deaths of both bulls. And both bulls were, in fact, the two swineherds from this story. And so we can see the quarrel of the two swineherds as being something of a prequel to the tawn. Not only telling us where the two bulls came from, but also establishing and foreshadowing the rivalry between Connacht and Ulster. But I think this story foreshadows other aspects of the tawn as well. In this story, we have the two swineherds who start off as best friends. But through the manipulations of others and through their own pride, they end up bitter rivals and even murder each other. Whereas in the Tawn, we have the conflict between Ferdia and Kukulu. These two warriors had trained together under the battle master Skahuk for many years, and they were the closest and firmest of friends. They definitely weren't gay, no matter what anyone tells you. Why would you think they were gay? There's no reason to think they were gay. Why did you even bring it up? It's, a, it's crazy that you'd bring that up. They definitely weren't gay. There's no reason to think that. Oh, and Queen Maeve tries to bribe Ferdia into fighting his friend Cuchulain with all kinds of offers of wealth and marriage to her daughter, Ferdia refuses until Maeve attacks his pride and insists that he must be too cowardly to fight Kukul. All through their combat, you can see the love that these two warriors have for each other until Ferdia is eventually killed. Kukulu. And so their once great friendship ends in tragedy, just like the friendship between the two swineherds. And that idea of two people who were once close developing an antagonistic relationship with each other is echoed in other parts of the story as well. Of course we have the battle between Ferdia and Kukulin, but also Queen Maeve of Connacht and King Crohor of Ulster were once married, but at the point of the Thorn had been long separated and despised each other. And Fergus McRoy, Maeve's consort and one of her chief generals, was once a close friend of King Crohor MacNessa, until Crohor betrayed his trust. Another thing to reflect on is that both pigs and bulls were seen as symbols of fertility, symbols of plenty, of wealth and of status. And so it's no coincidence that the swineherds start as the herders of pigs 
and end as bulls. It's also no coincidence that wealth and status is one of the driving motivations of the Thom itself. So the conflict of the two swineherds not only sets up where the bulls came from and the rivalry between Connacht and Ulster, it also sets up some of the main antagonistic rivalries and the main motivations for the epic. But of course, this story has its own themes and ideas separate from those of the Thom. In Ireland and many other cultures as well, some professions, specialised professions, were thought of as bringing special powers to their practitioners. Professions such as blacksmiths or stonemasons. Or pork was a food staple in Ireland. It was one of the main meats you would get to eat. And the rump of the pig was considered a high status food. It was called the champion's portion. And the greatest warrior or hero at the table would be the one who got to eat it. And swine herding itself was a very difficult job. Pigs are very strong and intelligent animals. And it was thought that they had magical powers of their own. There are many stories in Irish myth and legend like the quarrel of the two swine herds that feature swine herds practicing special magical abilities. They are often depicted as being like prophets or akin to druids. They have powers such as predicting the future, changing the weather, communing with animals or shape-shifting. And with all that in mind, I think it's fair to surmise that swineherd was one of those special professions that people believed carried its own magical powers and magical prowess with it. It also would have been a fairly high status occupation, contrary to what we might expect in the modern day. It was because of their intelligence and strength that pigs were thought of as magical creatures and they were strongly associated with fertility, with death, and with the other world. In fact, there were many stories of great heroes and warriors such as Fionn Macul and the Fianna being led into the other world while they were hunting a fairy pig. It's also said that when inhabitants from the other world show themselves in the form of a pig or with aspects of a pig, they are showing themselves in their more aggressive and warlike aspect. Uh, the two swine herds in the story are already firmly linked to the other world, given that both of them work for kings of the Shi and are likely kings themselves. And given their magical nature and their propensity for shapeshifting, we may say that they share some of the characteristics attributed to their charges, the pigs, including the aggression, which might explain how these two firm friends were so easily driven to conflict and eventually killing one another. As some scholars have suggested that metamorphosis in myths is symbolic of emotional turmoil or trauma, and that a character turning into an animal or acquiring animalistic traits or even being strongly associated with an animal shows the animalistic behavior that comes out from that kind of rage or fear or sadness. So the shape-shifting and violence in the combat between the two swineherds could be seen as a reflection of their mounting anger and frustration with each other. Shapeshifting contests are also a common motif in the contest of equals tale type, in which two, usually magicians, try to outdo each other through their cleverness and their craft. All in all, this story acts as not only a prequel to the tone, setting up its core conflict 
its antagonistic relationships, and the origin of the two bulls the war was fought over. It's also a standalone example of its own specific tale type, serving to show how the ancient Irish viewed the profession of swineherding and its magical nature, but also as an indication of what they may have used the idea of metamorphosis to communicate and explain to one another. Thank you to my patrons, including the mighty Ashkarp, first of her name, Keeper of the Magikarp, and Empress of the Great Shiny Sea, as well as all of my other patrons. And thank everyone who has watched this video, analyzing the quarrel of the two swineherds. I actually really enjoyed doing this topic, or I actually really enjoyed doing the analysis on this one. It turned out to be a much richer story than I was expecting in terms of its themes and underlying messages and especially in its relationship to the Tawn. Aside from the obvious parallels, the other ones that were uncovered, I, I wasn't expecting to see those. So yeah, this was pleasantly surprising. I was, I was quite happy with it. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, please leave a like or share the video, do the YouTube things, you know how YouTube works. And just remember that your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies.